Okay, uh, my name is Marco. I'm with Latino Soul Trap actually. Uh, and uh, I, citizen jo I recently joined uh, Citizens for Trump, which is like a nationwide online uh, network. So we helped uh, Donald Trump uh, get elected with like a grassroots. So I'm here with uh, Jorge, who's a photographer. Mr. George Ryan. And no with uh, Jack Frost. Jack Frost. So what's going on here today? Well, we're at a party for Kristen Olson, who's a candidate for vice chair of the California Republican Party. She'll be uh, running for office tomorrow at the election. Awesome. It seems like a pretty good deal. Everybody's singing out there. Are you guys going to go sing? Or? No, no, that's not one of my talents. So I'm a good listener, but I'm not a good singer. Are you, uh, are you a delegate here, Jack? No, or? I'm not a delegate. My wife yeah. is a county supervisor. Awesome. Uh, so, so what what do you guys think about um i'm a delegate marco you're a delegate yeah. what, what do you think about donald trump uh how are you gonna do it here in california because there's so much opposition um i didn't know california was relevant <laughs> <laughs> well but you know we have all this uh we're getting hit pretty hard with the immigration stuff and you have a lot of uh like in la a lot of my friends are from la and it seems that uh, they're getting hit pretty hard. Like they, they don't want to know anything about Trump. So how are we going to push that here? How are we going to? What do you mean they're being, being hit hard? How? I, I've yeah. heard a lot of complaints about Obamacare being repealed and it affects uh, Latinos. I don't see how because before Obamacare we had Medi-Cal, we had Medicare, we had Medicaid. If we don't have Obamacare, we can always go back to Medi-Cal, Medicare, and Medicaid. If you have more money. You could say I want to expand the scope of Medi-Cal, Medicare, Medicaid. You could say I want to cover more people under Medi-Cal, Medicare, Medicaid. You can expand whatever it is that makes it so that people qualify for those kind of things. Under Obamacare, it requires people to give up money because they're required and even at the cost of their home. So if they were to want to elect a, or opt out of having Obamacare, because they couldn't afford it and afford their mortgage, or they had to give up feeding their children because they couldn't keep their home and not comply with federal law of having Obamacare. I don't think that that's reasonable. If you're talking about the injustice of people being arrested for rape or car theft or breaking and entering or any kind of felonious law and finding out that they're illegal and so they have to adhere to immigration laws, I don't see that as being unfair. If you're talking about somebody coming here and they're not given a privilege that other people are given a privilege to, I don't see where that applies because I know that there's a lot of Slavic people that are coming here and they don't speak English and they get social security <laughs> and they get given an opportunity to learn how to learn English and find out how to make it work so that they can take care of their family here in America. I, I don't see that being taken away from anybody. I mean, I, I, I talk to the people on a regular basis. I don't, I mean, there might be some situations where there might be a communication barrier that makes one person have to have some kind of uh, advocacy and they may not understand how to get the advocacy because of the language barrier. They're afforded an interpreter in every one of the departments in administrative law, uh, whether you're talking about the Department of Human Assistance or you're talking about Social Security, they're given interpreters, they're given uh, translated uh, administrative law for everything that's policy that they're having to deal with. And if they're not seeking those kind of uh, um, people who are helping them out, then that's on them again. I don't see that Trump is causing any kind of problems. On fake news, yesterday, you know how he went on and talked about CNN and that. We have Univision uh, in Spanish, and Univision seems like it's like CNN on asteroids, but in Spanish. And, and they're throwing this message out there to 60 million people and it's uh, coming back to us and we're looking we're looking like the devil in their eyes so well, you have all this maybe people. they should watch Telemundo <laughs> let me let me add to and, that and I'm going to jump in on this okay. because awesome. I'm actually running for Congress over in Javier Paceres to see right. and I'm getting tired of Eric Garcetti and, and your name sir my name is William Rodriguez Morrison and Gil Cedillo 
inciting that the community is going to be disarrayed from their family and, and telling them to protest in the streets, okay? The one thing that happened, this early release program, what happened to the uh, officer in Whittier that got shot, that individual was, should have been a person that should have been deported. And like I'm saying too, if they're committing bodily harm, they should be executed because we send them back over the border. They keep coming back. These are gang members and these are individuals that are really ruling it for other people that want to become Americans. So, you know, they're scaring everybody. And I can say one thing that's happening in L.A. too. And this is, they'll, they'll be paying to try to get a citizenship. They'll go to the uh, Mexican consulate and they're not even entitled to get a citizenship because they're just running them around and giving them like Miss Hopes. Well, Trump is trying to do is trying to make sure that they are here legally and getting their citizenships. Obama did say he was going to give them citizenships. He never did. And this is one thing in the Congress. I'm going to make sure that my community is safe and that the ones that are working hard are going to get a citizenship. But if you're going to commit bodily harm or hurt another individual or kill another individual, those are going to be deported. And I'll make the law stricter to where they should be. Actually, we should use the death penalty. And also, the, the biggest problem, and I think it's going to be this DACA uh, uh, people. You know, there's like 700-something <laughs> thousand people that are uh, in the limbo right now. And, and they have this attitude of, um, of entitlement where, where Obama did lie to them and sold them something at the fair auction. And right. it, I know about that. And that's my fiance is in that predicament too because she was part of DACA so she's really afraid that she's going to be deported and I told her not to fear on anything as long as I'm standing really I'm going to fight for her rights and other people's rights awesome all right thank you thank you sir pleasure uh, meeting you and Ashley if you want to put the card up there so they can yes. follow me on yes. Facebook definitely uh, William Rodriguez Morrison Come on, for US Congress yes. There you have it, guys. Uh, this is uh, uh, William Rodriguez. He's running for Congress here in uh, California. And uh, he just gave us a very good... Uh, he gave us a very good... Oops, sorry. Um, about this. And then we were talking to Jorge. And Jorge... Let's go back to Jorge. Can I ask a couple of questions? What's that? So you seem to know a lot about this Medicaid stuff. Well, I'm about to be a tax attorney and a forensic accountant, and I have seven degrees, so I know a little bit about administrative law. <laughs> yeah, I would say, I would say. <laughs> Taking a class or two. <laughs> of course. Isn't she pretty? Look, Warren yes. <laughs> Say build that wall. <laughs> What about on the wall, Congress? Um, what about on the wall? What do you think about that? I, I have to sneak up on her. Well, there's a. Uh, it's an interesting thing because they have so many tunnels that go so deep down underneath the ground. You gotta say, why are people so upset about the wall? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, it worked for people on Game of Thrones. You know, I think White that, Walkers did not harass anybody for a thousand years. I don't know why anybody would be against the wall. <laughs> let, let me tell you something, Jorge. I was born and raised in Mexico. Okay, I came here uh, when I was 17. I think the wall is very psychological, and I think it's, uh, it's about boundaries, and I think it's putting a lot of weight psychologically on a lot of people that are here physically, but mentally, they haven't really... Uh, well, I have a question then, brother. What about the wall in southern Mexico that keeps South America out from Mexico? I mean, like, how come it's what's good for Mexico is not good for America? Well, yeah, yeah, because you know what the real issue is, is that Colombia produces this thing called cocaine. I don't know okay. if anybody's ever heard of this. However, I, I heard of it once. However, we used to have this uh, military base in Panama, and they used to monitor like a chokehold, right? It's called chokehold. And they would limit under the supervision of our good CIA and say only only these people are allowed to bring this cocaine into, uh, into Mexico, right? Now, our military base said, for some reason, like 15 years after the treaty ended, we were gonna pull out of there. I don't know why. 
<coughs> and they let that poor starving country that was making their money scrabbling and trying to barter with the soldiers, right? And they said, well, we're just going to pull out and we're going to leave this poor little hungry country to take care of itself. Well, right after that happened, Colombia said, hey, hey, you guys are my workers now. You're going to do what I say. Or I'm going to kill your families. And so then they, they became, you know, drug mules and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden you see all these people running from all these drug lords that made all this money, running up into Mexico. The Mexican president sent soldiers that shot like all these students. And uh, Are you familiar with this? Yeah. So shot all these students and all this stuff. They, they were just massacring all their people because all, all these South Americans were running up into Mexico trying to get away from the drug lords. That pushed Mexicans to run up into America, which made Americans say, whoa, you guys are running up into our country. You know, we didn't say that we were going to let you guys come in here. We just said we were going to let you guys have your drugs down there because we were going to pull out because our treaty was over. Right? And so they have a wall to keep the drugs and all the craziness of South America out of Mexico because there's already their drug lords and they don't want competition. Yeah. I could go another way with that, but I'm going to say, because they don't want competition, so they don't let the drug dealers from South America come up and take Mexican territory, right? Because that belongs to Mexico, in accordance to who has districts over each one of the little villages. So, so all this mumbo-jumbo about all this uh, trying to uh, incite or, or, or inject this hate into the Mexican uh, people. That America is it's their enemy. Propaganda. It's all propaganda. Okay. City council rates are down. Because it's. Because even still, if they didn't want to let Mexicans, the right Mexicans, sell the right drugs into America, they wouldn't have all those tunnels. Because they use seismic monitors and they go, but and they break the ground and they make it all cave in. And they don't. They're not trying to do that. Only the right drug dealers get to come from South America into Mexico, and only the right drug dealers get to come from Mexico into America. With the right drugs. That's right. You better renew your contract. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jorge. All right, guys, that was Jorge. Um, thank you, guys. Talk to you soon.